It is my great honor to welcome Madaris' Chris Mason to the 19th hole here at KUSI. Chris, once again, honoring our master's tradition and helping us uh, break down the final round. Chris, your general impressions, please. Well, it was a terrific uh, weekend again, wasn't it? The Masters never fails to disappoint. Um, I don't know whether it's Amen Corner or the Sunday Roars, but the drama always seems to come, doesn't it, on Sunday? It always seems to come from the final pairing. Why is it that the last group always produces the winner, it seems? Uh, it's very, very difficult to attack Augusta, especially on the back nine. You've got some par fives that you can get to, but if you slip up at all, then obviously you're going to make a pretty easy bogey. It's much, much easier to position your way around from the lead. I would say the match play, it ended up becoming match play between uh, Bubba and Jordan, and it turned on the eighth and ninth hole. We have some video. What happened? Well, yeah, Spieth had a two-shot lead at the time, didn't he? And it looked like he was going to make another birdie on the eighth hole, but um, pitch came up short and um, ended up three-putting. And Bubba made a couple of birdies, one on eight, and another really good putt on nine, and a couple of really unforced errors from Jordan Spieth. Um, on eight and nine, so that turned the table and, and Bubba never relinquished the lead from that. You know, for a moment there, as you were saying, it looked like Jordan Spieth was going to become the youngest winner ever at a Masters. Is this too early to start comparing this kid to uh, Tiger Woods? <laughs> Hold your horses, mate. I don't <laughs> think so. Um, I, I do think he's going to be the next great American player. He has all the facets to his game. He's very, very mature and uh, I really think he could be the next best player. Um, you know, there's the old adage, you drive for show, putt for dough, but is Bubba Watson proving that adage wrong? I mean, he's hitting the ball so far and so straight and really destroying that golf course at the moment, and no one can really keep up. He's, he's hitting flip wedges into par fives and, and being able to dissect the greens a little bit better than everybody else. So, so They made Augusta Tiger-proof. Do they have to make it Bubba-proof? I don't or think so. proof I don't know. It might be lefty-proof. I think uh, six of the last 12 have been lefty winners, so um, they might want to do something for that uh, fade he keeps hitting off the team. I mean, look how, look how far he's bobbing the ball past Jordan Speed, for instance. I mean, it's just it's amazing. Yeah, it really is, yeah. I mean, he's the longest player in golf, and it certainly helps him around Augusta. Well, here's what the two guys had to say after the round. Um, eight was a big swing. He three, I think he three-putted eight and nine. Um, or no, he, he didn't three-putt nine, but he made a bogey. So, um, and I birdied it both. So, uh, you know, I, it changes the momentum right there. And then I was just trying to hang on. So I knew that once the momentum switched, it was, it was a little bit in my favor. You know, if you have the lead, you always have a little advantage on everybody. You know, ultimately, Bubba played some incredible golf. Hats off to him. Uh, there wasn't going to be a whole lot I could do unless I played a flawless round, even after being a few under. So, um, you know, he deserved it that, you know, eight under on this golf course um, was a number that I thought would be difficult to achieve after the first couple of days. And, uh, you know, he found a way to do it. So hats off to him. All right, Chris now has moved over to the KUSI driving range. I believe we are at the 17th tee box at Augusta. I believe that's, I see Eisenhower's tree, which is no longer there. Uh, Mr. Mason, <laughs> golf swing tip, please. Absolutely. Uh, some of you at home might have noticed that Spieth and Bub actually had a little bit of a pause at the top of their golf swing. Now, it's great for sequencing and really good for generating power. So I've got a really good drill for you to use it on the range. And our uh, scratch handicap here, Dave's going to help us. All he's going to do, swing to the top of his swing. Now from the top there, he's going to put a little bit of weight into his front foot, let the club come down, and then he can hit balls that way. It's really, really good for sequencing and uh, really, really good for getting a little bit more distance off the tee as well. So your form looks terrific. Can I use a wedge on the tee? <laughs> I think you've got to use the driver, I'm afraid. <laughs> but I heard you're quite the player. <laughs> Chris, Chris, maybe we can go out one time. I'll, I'll, I'll take lessons from you anytime, honestly. <laughs> Speaking of which, Mr. Mason, thank you very much. Throw, throw the graphic up, guys. Uh, Chris is a, the director of instruction out at Madeiras, and his golf academy is, well, everyone talks about it. So please, give him a call at 858-342-6967, or get a hold of him at Chris Mason at MadeirasGolfAcademy.com. Mr. Mason, thank you so very much for spending some of your Sunday afternoon with us on the 17th Tee Box and trust me, I don't think Dave Scott has enough money. He, I don't think he can afford it. <laughs>